Chapter 6, Section 4, we're going to start drawing Lewis structures. We only draw Lewis structures for covalent bonds. This is how we represent the molecules of covalent bonds. We're also going to identify the number of bonds an atom can form based on its number of valence and the octet rule, the common bonding behaviors of groups 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then we'll start looking at the rules of drawing a Lewis structure. So each of these has the following number of valence. Hydrogen has one valence, carbon has four, nitrogen has five valence, oxygen has six valence, fluorine has seven valence, and X is going to stand for the other halogens, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And these also have seven valence. So based on the number of valence, starting with hydrogen, we can determine how many bonds are these elements typically going to make. Because hydrogen only has the one valence, from that one, it's only going to make one bond. Realize that that bond represents two electrons and hydrogen can only have two electrons maximum. It can never have more than two. It doesn't have an octet like the other elements. It only has a duet. Looking at carbon, carbon has four valence. One, two, three, four. And I realize that this is not the typical way to draw the Lewis dot structure, but for carbon, this is how they are oriented. And we'll talk about more why later when we discuss hybridization. However, carbon having the four valence electrons is capable of having four bonds. One, two, three, four. And you'll notice if you count, now that each of those bonds represents two electrons, it now has an octet of two, four, six, and eight. Nitrogen has five valence. So one, two, three, four, five. And notice that we have one pair of electrons here, and then we have three single electrons. And those single electrons are going to form bonds, so we're going to have one, two, three bonds, and one pair around nitrogen. So this is two, four, six, eight, creating the octet. So when nitrogen makes three bonds, it forms its octet. Let's look at oxygen. It has six valence. One, two three, four, five, six. So notice oxygen has two pairs, a pair here and a pair here, and has two singles. Those singles are going to form bonds with other elements, and that's going to give oxygen two bonds and two pairs, giving it its octet. Again, two, four, six, eight. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And with those seven valence electrons, you'll notice it has three pairs. Here's a pair, there's a pair, there's a pair. Here's the single electron. It's going to form one bond with that single electron. Fluorine will only ever have this scenario. You can only ever have one bond with fluorine. However, the other halogens we're going to find later might be capable sometimes of having more than an octet. It's called exceeding the octet rule. But generally, the halogens, CLBR and I, have seven valence. And therefore, will generally make the one bond, creating the two, four, six, eight, the octet. But again, recall that these elements can sometimes exceed the octet rule, so we might see a little bit more than just one bond on occasion. So in other words, these can be the center element sometimes, but we'll talk about that some more later. All right, there are two exceptions to the octet rule. Hydrogen will only have what's called a complete duet, not an octet, meaning it can only have two electrons, and when it gets two electrons, then it becomes stable. So here you have your hydrogens, they each have one valence electron, they're going to form a bond with each other, and when they do that, here's the bond where they share electrons, and so recall that the dash represents two electrons, and that's it. We don't add any, notice there are no lone pairs around the hydrogen atom, there's only two electrons in the bond between them. As opposed to boron, which because it only has three valence, it can only make three bonds. 
And so it's going to acquire a maximum of six total valence. So here's the example where you have a boron surrounded by three fluorine atoms. And notice that boron only has two, four, six electrons. That's the maximum. That's it for boron. It's not capable of making or of having an octet. Fluorine, on the other hand, each fluorine atom does have its octet. Two, four, six, eight electrons around that fluorine. Two, four, six, eight around this one. Two, four, six, eight around that one. So each fluorine has an octet, but the boron only has six electrons valence maximum. Notice that these little pairs around the fluorine I'm referring to as lone pairs and notice that hydrogen does not have any. Hydrogen should never have pairs of electrons around them. So is it possible to have more than eight electrons in the valence shell? It is. It's known as exceeding the octet rule. So for example, phosphorus has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around it. And so that's obviously more than an octet. However, it's capable of doing that. Elements with an atomic number of 15 or more. So atomic number 15 or higher are capable of exceeding the octet rule. And then on to your right, you'll see the iodine has two, four, six, eight, and then it has this pair here, 10, and another pair here, making 12. So this iodine has 12 valence electrons, where this phosphorus has 10 valence electrons, because they can exceed the octet rule. So let's talk about the rules of how to draw a Lewis structure, and I'll do one example step by step. Here's step one. We're gonna add up the total number of valence electrons using a periodic table. So here's my example. And what we do is we look at what group number the element is located in. So CH2Cl2, carbon is in group four, so it has four valence, plus hydrogen is in group one. Because there's a two next to it, I'm gonna multiply by two. And then chlorine has seven valence, and then there are two chlorines, so I'm going to multiply that by two as well. So one carbon, one hydrogen times two, one chlorine times two. This is going to give me a total number of valence. This gives me 20 valence electrons. So my goal is going to be to draw a structure that has 20 electrons total. Okay, step two is going to be to place the least electronegative element in the center and create a skeleton center. Never, ever, ever put hydrogen or fluorine in the center. Any other element you can place in the center. Our least electronegative element in this case is carbon. So I'm going to place carbon in the center of my structure and it's surrounded by two hydrogens and two chlorines. Remember carbon can typically make four bonds. So I'm not really sure where they go, so I'm just gonna randomly put my two hydrogens and my two chlorines on different ends of the carbon. This is my skeleton structure. That's step two. Okay, step three, I'm gonna make sure that all atoms have an octet by adding dots. Never add dots to hydrogen since it only needs a duet for stability for stability. So I'm going to leave hydrogen alone. Notice that carbon has two, four, six, eight. No dots necessary. Each chlorine, however, is going to need three pairs of dots to give each of them their octet. And so now I have satisfied rule number three. Step four is going to be to check to see if your total number of electrons equals the number of valence electrons. So I'm going to add up everything, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I did have 20 electrons total when I counted, which happens to match my number of valence electrons, and so this structure is completed. So the final answer is going to be C two H's, two chlorines, and that's my final Lewis structure right here.